And Mike, the only reason I'm going to ask this is because I thought I knew and I didn't. How do you pronounce your last name? Rancor. Okay, so I got yeah. it right. Yeah, you had it right. Okay, okay. definitely. Um, Mike, hey, third time in a row that that <laughs> your company here in Lewiston, Maine, has been asked to make these shoes again for the Olympic team. How does that feel? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's fantastic to have that ability, you know, to produce the kind of quality and you know the products that uh, the Olympic t team needs, and so it's a wonderful experience for us. I mean, it's just I hope it keeps going. You know, this the the style of footwear they're asking for this time is um, much different than anything yeah. you guys have made in the past. I mean, right. it, it, you guys make a variety of different types of shoes, but what was what was different about this style of boot compared to other things you guys are used to making? Well, technically speaking, I mean, it's the most demanding boot we've ever made, bar none. In, in all my years of making footwear, including boot making, uh, it's been the most challenging uh, boot from the standpoint of bringing all the pieces together and then creating this, uh, what I think to be a beautiful product for, for the team, for the uh, Olympic team. Um, as a, for instance, I mean, if, we, if you took one of our traditional boots and you took it apart, you'd find that on average it has about 15 different pieces to it to complete it. This boot for the Olympic team has somewhere around 33 parts, uh, so double what we normally do in order to complete the boot. From a step standpoint, so if you look at you know where we start from cutting and then we attach the sole and then finally pack it, it's about 110 steps just to complete the pair of boots. So amazing amount of work and I, and I you know we talked about this it's it's a testament to our traditional workforce I mean if you go out there and you look at you know the folks that have been with me for 25 plus years we probably have hundreds of years of, of uh, experience in shoemaking and so for them to come together and pull this all together in a really short period of time it was so amazing to watch very proud of them and what they're doing uh, and also very proud of the fact that we're representing Maine in this way you know, you're proud of them. I, I asked a lot of your longtime employees how they feel about making something yeah. for the Olympic team. Now, now for the third time. Right. And still the overwhelming emotion that I got from them was pride. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it in their face. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I always talk about this. It's, uh, you know, you work all your life and you, uh, you produce, you know, everyday goods, let's say. I think they're special even though they're everyday goods. But when you're done working in your life and you have this career you look back on, I mean, how many people can say that, you know, we supplied or furnished, you know, footwear to the Olympic teams, not only once, but three times now? And that's, that's really cool. Yeah, it's very cool. You know, and, and, and I, one thing, I, I, I said it very bluntly to somebody else, and I hope you pardon me for being so blunt. Sorry. I mean, Pol Polo could pick any company. They could yeah. pick Nike, Adidas, yeah. you know, Puma, you, you name it. Right. But they pick you guys in, in, in Lewiston. Yeah. Now, now three times in a row. Right. I mean... What do you think it is that's attracting them to come back to, to you guys? <laughs> yeah, it's not about price or anything. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not about price at all. Uh, like I said, you you don't get wealthy or retire or make a collection of shoes for the Olympic team. I mean, it's it's yeah, it's a, again. I come back to the fact that this this great testimonial about the, how the world views uh, what we do here at Rancor and Company, and it's not really me. It's really about the workforce and in our ability to craft product like we're doing right now really short period of time and have them look beautiful perfect i mean perfect for the olympic team you know one thing we did talk about last time was the impact that immigrants have had on you being able to yeah. continue doing this type of work right but one thing we talked about this time was the some of your employees who have been with you for decades i mean that creates at least from my observation a very well blended factory yeah. where people have decades of experience yeah. you know some of them say that hey i worked for bass and wilton for a number of yeah. years before i came here I mean, talk about if you don't mind sure I mean, what, what is what is kind of the experience melting pot not just the right. um, demographic melting right. pot. so i mean i always think in terms of um you know i've opened factories around the world and, and i can think in terms of being in a certain country where they had very few shoemakers and we would have to bring shoemakers from maine to actually train the folks in whatever country we're working in so this is a good example. If we were just going to hire, you know, our immigrant population, we would never be able to launch into the products that we're making now for the Olympic team. They're so demanding, you know, again, from a technical standpoint, they have to be executed very, very finely in order to make this boot look the way it does. So 
with the immigrant population melding in with our traditional workforce, you can see they're learning and they're, and they're you know, working together as a team to accomplish what needs to be accomplished. It takes time, maybe a few more years before I can really feel confident you know, that they're going to be the next shoemakers uh, of Lewis and Auburn of, or of Rancor. Yeah, but this is, I mean, not everybody can say that. What, what the, 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 the dynamic that you have here of all yeah. the different types of employees. Yeah. And not everybody can say that. Yeah, I think that's important. And you know, I said it before, I think it's really important that we embrace, you know, this immigrant population that's uh, located in Lewis and Auburn. Uh, I think it's important for the future, important for our community. You know, if we're going to succeed as a community, you need to have new, a new workforce. You have to have a new population. You know, they have to populate your schools and they have to pay taxes and do all the things that's super important for communities like Lewis and Auburn. How's it going to feel for you? I know how, the, I know how they feel. How's it going to feel for you when you watch the opening and closing yeah. ceremonies in Beijing and you yeah. see your employees craft <laughs> made by hand born on that stage? So every year, for the last few years, we, we get, you know, whether it's family or whether it's friends, we get together and we'll have, you know, a night, you know, a night of opening ceremony, um, you know, cocktails and appetizers. And we did it last summer when we were done with the Olympic sneakers that we shipped out and it's not just me i mean you can see it in the face of the people that are gathering around us you know how proud they are and how proud we are you know again my wife is unabashedly a rancor promoter and so she's amazing in regards she's a great cheerleader for us and it's just a, an incredible thing to see it happen um what should we make sure we mention that we haven't talked about now about these boots compared to what you guys have done in the past for the olympic team did, I, did we leave something out? Is I, it the same as it's been the times before? The materials have to meet a certain standard? Yeah, the materials, uh, by and large, I mean, they're from the United States. And so, and they do have to meet certain standards. They got a rigorous testing program, you know, to test all the materials and our processes as well. So, super important for them when it comes to being able to say, you know, we followed this incredibly high standard in producing this boot, as they did with the Olympic, uh, Olympic sneakers and as they did with the boat shoes. From back in 2016 so cool um i don't know like i i i don't want to get complacent because i've been here a couple <laughs> times but but i feel like you did a good job answering my question yeah great is there something we didn't no we're good okay. maybe i'm right. getting used to this process <laughs> yeah.